Good morning. Welcome, welcome to our Easter sunrise service. So glad to gather on Easter Sunday morning, see the sunrise, and to remember the women as they made their way to the place, the place where Jesus was laid. Okay, all right, so as we watch the sunrise and we remember the dawning of the day when Jesus' disciples began to be aware that he was no longer in the grave, as the light comes into our world this morning, it's a joy to recall that wonderful day. Jesus is alive. Death could not hold him in the ground. By faith in Jesus, we claim that same victory, glory to our Savior. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the blessing of being here today. I thank you, Lord, for all those who've come out and all those that have prepared to help celebrate the resurrection of our Savior from the dead. Because death did not hold him, we have our hope firmly rooted in him. Lord, we thank you for the fellowship that we enjoy because it, it's a foretaste of glory divine when we will gather in heaven around your throne to worship you forever and ever. Father, we thank you for the sure knowledge that those that we love that put their trust in you are already gathered there and someday we will join them again. Lord, we thank you for that hope, for that promise. And Father, as we gather today, we think about those women as they made their way to the tomb. And what a, a sadness must have filled them as they thought about their grim duty of preparing the body of Jesus for burial. And what joy to really, to realize he's not here, but is risen. Bless us today as we remember that. Thank you, Lord, for those that have gathered to worship. We, may our worship be honoring to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture says, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing was white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and because and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren, and go to Galilee, and there they shall see me.
Because He 
What a beautiful day. What a beautiful way to begin the celebration of the resurrection of our Savior from the dead. Jesus makes all the difference. He makes all the difference. There are many, many religions in our world today. There's only one that gives us the hope of the resurrection from the dead. There's only one. There's only one Jesus. There's only one Savior. I think about that moment when Mary and the other Mary came to the grave, that moment, that discovery, that truth means the deliverance of man from the grips of fear of death. Until that moment, death was the veil not to be pulled away. It could not be overcome or evaded. Death was separation from the earth, from those that you loved, even separation from God. But the resurrection, to, to re-stand, to stand again, means life. Death is defeated. What was separated is made whole again. Think about that. What was separated is made whole again. Because of Jesus, we have the hope of eternal life. Not separated, but together. With those who have gone before us, the assurance of peace with God and the promise of being in his presence. I think about the passage from 1 Corinthians 15 where Paul gives a great defense of the doctrine of the resurrection. It reads 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 2. Now, if Christ is preached that he has risen, been risen from the dead, how do some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most pitiful. But, 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 now is Christ risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by death, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die. Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, <coughs> For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death! Where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. What a promise. What a promise. My hope is in the Lord. And I would ask you the question this morning, where is your hope? 
Where is your hope? The sunrise, a beautiful Sunday morning. It's a little cool, but that's all right. We have a risen Savior. The sunrise offers the promise of a new day. It reminds us of the constancy of the Lord and his faithfulness. Sunrise, sunset, sunrise, sunset, swiftly fly the days. Don't they fly swiftly? One day, our last sunset, our last sunrise, and our last sunset on earth will come. But with the Son of God, with Jesus as our Savior, our new home will have the Son of God as the source of light and life. The empty tomb makes all the difference. We come today to celebrate a risen Savior. My prayer is that you have put your trust in Him. If you have not, today is a wonderful day to do that. Let us celebrate Jesus. Why don't we stand to get that blood flowing this morning? Amen. Amen. <laughs> some wonderful things and uh, I know there's coffee up here and donuts and downstairs there's all kinds of stuff Terry's potatoes and well there are potatoes they're not exactly Terry's potatoes <laughs> it's what a wonderful day thank you for being here let's pray and, and we'll ask the blessing on the food and when you get there you can just start enjoying father thank you for the blessing of being here today thank you for the resurrection of Jesus our Savior from the dead thank you for a great group who have gathered to celebrate that today Father, we come and, and we come to worship you. We come to lift up your holy name. To think about Mary, she made her way to the tomb in sadness and, and in fear. The great earthquake, the stone was rolled away from the door and the proclamation, he is not here, but is risen, gives us hope. Father, I, my hope is in Jesus. I pray that the hope of everyone who can hear me this morning is in Jesus and if not, that transaction can be made so quickly to recognize that we come short, that we are in need to recognize that we are sinners in need of a Savior, to open the door of our heart, to let him in is such an easy, simple thing that you desire. Lord, I pray that transaction would be made today. Bless our fellowship and our time. Give us a, a second to warm up, Lord, and I just thank you for all those who have gathered today. 
We give you honor and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Come on in and eat. <laughs>